Okay, guys, here's part four. Last day of notes. So why don't you pause it so you can write them all down. You make sure, double check that they're all up there. Yep, there we are. Perfect. Okay, so hopefully you paused it and you wrote them down. Let's go to Ronald Reagan. Now remember, Jimmy Carter did not get reelected because the Iranian hostage crisis and the bad economy. It was called stagflation, meaning inflation was going up, prices were going up, but the economy was stagnant. People, uh, the businesses were not making as much money. Production was down. So stagflation is not going to get you reelected. People are losing jobs, inflation going up, not a good combination, plus the hostages. So that brought in Ronald Reagan. And yesterday we mentioned how sometimes we go Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. That's what happened here. Carter was Democrat. Remember, he was the anti-Nixon. He was the honest guy, the, the Sunday school teacher, the Bible guy, the honest guy. But he was not reelected. So that means we went with the Republican Ronald Reagan. So put a big R-E-P for Republican. 1981 to 1989, so that's two terms. So for the times three, put two terms. So popular, pretty popular president. He was called the great communicator. Put that for the times three. That might be on your exam. The great communicator, true or false? Jimmy Carter was called the great communicator. False, it was Reagan, okay? Whatever it might be. So uh, another thing, he was an actor. Ronald Reagan was a, I wouldn't say movie star, but he made a lot of movies in Hollywood in the 40s and 50s. If you've ever seen Casablanca, the famous movie that made Humphrey Bogart uh, a big star, that role was first given to Ronald Reagan. He turned it down. So he was an actor. And uh, obviously, if you're an actor, you're... If you're comfortable in front of a camera, that might help you get elected. That's why he was called the great communicator. Okay, so big thing to know about Reagan is that he believed in supply side economics. Think of supply side as the business side. Suppliers are the businesses. Consumers are the people buying the stuff. Okay, so you got suppliers, consumers, buyers, sellers. So if you're supply side economics, it was also called Reaganomics. Put that for times five. Reagan and then omics, Reaganomics. Also called trickle down economics. If you're going to be a supply side economist, economic, economic, economist, got it. If you're going to be a supply side economist or president who believes in it, what are you going to do? You're going to give tax breaks to the businesses. You're going to help the businesses. You're going to help the suppliers. And you're hoping that if you help the businesses, they'll be able to hire more people. They'll be able and that will help the people that need work. Just like with, remember we talked about FDR. Remember that? FDR and the New Deal in the 1930s to get us out of the Depression. He used public money. He used government jobs to try to help out. That's the exact opposite of trickle down. Trickle down, you're going to help the businesses, and you're going to help. You're going to hope that that money trickles down to people who need it. It's the opposite of FDR. Is FDR help the workers, and that would help the businesses if they have money in their pockets to buy from the workers. Okay. The thing with trickle down economics or Reaganomics or supply side side economics, however you would like to put it, is that if you're cutting taxes. And you're still spending a lot on the military, which Republicans usually do. They want to have a strong military. You're going to have a big deficit. You're cutting taxes and you're spending more. That means your government's going to owe a lot of money. Right now, the government owes $23 trillion, $24 trillion with all this uh, virus stuff. Government's paying this and this and this and this. Who knows? It'll probably be $25, $26 trillion in the next year or two. Government deficit. That's how much the government owes. Okay. Iran Contra Affair, number five. This was uh, his scandal. Contragate, you might call it. What happened was down in Nicaragua, 
the uh, Nicaraguans were getting helped by the Soviets. Remember, this is still the Cold War going on. Soviets and America are not going to fight directly. They're going to fight through the children. So they're going to fight through Cuba. They're going to fight through Vietnam, through Korea. A lot of Central American countries, too, were going through this. Nicaragua is between Mexico and South America and Central America, right? So the Soviets were trying to help the Nicaraguans. So this group called the Contra, which means against in Spanish, the Contras were going to fight against the Soviets, the Soviet helped side. So obviously we didn't want communism to spread in Central America. So we're going to try to help the Contras. But after Vietnam, remember, we started to question ourselves, right? Oh, no, 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 let's not get involved. So what happened was Reagan's government secretly started funding the Contras, secretly started funding them. And how did they do this? By selling weapons to Iran, who, by the way, was fighting against Iraq, who we were helping Iraq. So that's very complicated, but think of it like this. Here's Iraq. We're helping them. We were helping Saddam Hussein. Because Iran was our enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So we're going to send weapons to Iraq. And now secretly, though, we're also going to send money and help out Iran, which is their enemy, because we need money. By, we need to sell these weapons to Iran illegally and secretly so that we can help the Contras fight against the Soviets in Nicaragua. People were caught. Reagan was getting old, the famous, I don't remember, Ronald Reagan, I don't remember. And the fact is, he did get Alzheimer's towards the end of his presidency. Nancy Reagan, his wife, was really, really making a lot of decisions with the help of an astrologist. She really believed in astrology. She would make decisions, but what the astrologist said. So when he said, honestly, three years ago, I don't remember, and uh, that's the famous Iran-Contra affair. Put Thomas five for that. Reagan still left as a popular president, but that was his scandal. Okay, let's see a quick one on Reagan here. Reagan. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Remember, that's the Cold War. President Ronald Reagan presided over the end of the Cold War and left an unforgettable legacy. Dutch, as he was known as a boy, came of age in Illinois during the Great Depression. The Reagan family never settled too long in one place. Reagan's father, Jack Reagan, was a shoe salesman with a drinking problem. I think that Reagan learned to shut out the unpleasantness. In life. By the late 1930s, Reagan found himself in Hollywood, working as an actor. I hope those gunners can hold him up. Reagan settled comfortably into Hollywood life. In 1940, he married leading lady Jane Wyman, and they had two children. He also became president of the Screen Actors Guild. But by 1948, his marriage unraveled, and Reagan became interested in politics. He also found a new companion. She could listen to Ronnie talk all night. Ronald Reagan married actress Nancy Davis in 1952. With wife Nancy, Reagan found his number one. Isn't that something they starred together in a movie? I'm tired of talking politics. A group of California businessmen became impressed by the charismatic actor and convinced him to run for governor. It's kind of like when Arnold Schwarzenegger became governor of California. Reagan's he was a movie star too. Picking up momentum, and by I'll be back to Terminator. Then, two months later, tragedy struck. Look at this. In a failed assassination attempt, Reagan was shot. Reagan's speedy recovery put him back in the White House, and he easily slipped into his second term as president. Thank you very much. By 1987, Reagan signed the landmark nuclear arms treaty with the Soviet Union, officially ending the Cold War. There is a great bond that draws the American and Soviet peoples together. It is the common dream of peace. 
The Great Communicator. Oh my gosh, it didn't get into the Iran Contra at all. <laughs> okay. There we go. There you can see me. Okay. President Bush. Remember, there's two Bushes. There's Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. George W. Bush is the junior. This is senior. Republican. He was the vice president for Ronald Reagan. Reagan was popular. Sometimes if you're vice president of a popular president, you get elected. Okay? So President Bush Sr., Republican. But you can see here, 89 to 93, only one term. So... Why do you usually not get reelected? If the economy is bad. That's why President Trump is hoping so much that he can get things going because he knows with unemployment so high now because of the virus and everything, it's going to be hard to get reelected. And that's what happened with Bush. The economy was not that good. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So he was only elected one term. Persian Gulf War. Okay. The Persian Gulf War, don't get this mixed up with the Iraq War. There was two wars were, were two wars in Iraq. The first one was with Persian Gulf War, it was called. Think of it like this. Let me get some paper here. Oh. All right. I'll put it right here. Here's Iraq. Put I for Iraq. Here's a little place called Kuwait. Kuwait. And here's the Persian Gulf. Just like the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Persian Gulf is water that gets the oil out of the Middle East. Whoever controls the Persian Gulf has extreme power because that's where the oil tankers come out with all the oil, the Persian Gulf. Okay? So Iraq invaded Kuwait. And we said, no, 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 Saddam Hussein. Remember, we were helping Saddam Hussein fight against Iran. Got that? Remember that. You Americans like to think of Saddam Hussein, the evil butcher, the terrible guy. Yeah, but when he was on our side, we weren't talking like that about him. So he invades Kuwait, and we don't like that because Kuwait's right on the Persian Gulf. That's so important to get the boats out of here, to get the big tankers out of there. So we say, you know what, you got, I think it was January something or another. I remember because I was on the subway in New York City. We gave him a deadline. Saddam Hussein, you better get out of Kuwait by this date, 12 o'clock midnight. And he didn't. I was on the subway coming home from some rehearsal and people started just whispering. This is before cell phones. I just heard it start. I just heard it start. And there was just like sadness. Oh my God, we're in another war because he didn't get out. He didn't get out of Kuwait. So George Bush Sr. kept his promise. If you don't get out, we're going to go to war with you. So we invaded and we got him out of Kuwait. It only took like two or three or four months. But what they did, the Iraqis did, they burned the oil fields in Kuwait as they left. Talk about global warming, ecological disaster. Imagine drilled oil just spewing flames and flames all over Kuwait because as Iraq left, and the big controversial thing, we let Saddam Hussein go back to Baghdad and stay there and keep power. Keep that in mind. Oh, George Bush Sr., you should have taken out Saddam Hussein. No, our mission was to get him out of Kuwait. That He's out of Kuwait. That's what we wanted. We know how easy it is to get rid of somebody, but look at the war with Iraq. Since we got rid of him later with his son... In the Iraq war, ISIS comes up, there's power vacuums. So sometimes the Americans said, you know, let's just leave the quote-unquote bad guy in power because at least we can kind of manage him versus some other terrorist group taking over or something. Then who knows what's going to happen? So Bush, he was a smart guy. He was the head of the CIA intelligence agency, Central Intelligence Agency. He said, you know what? Saddam Hussein is going to go back to Iraq we can probably work with him at least. Just, just leave him there. Got it? So that's the Persian Gulf War. The Gulf War ends times two. Put down the Berlin Wall fell. Put down that uh, Soviet Union broke up. 
That was when George Bush was president. Okay. Now for the economy, he had the famous quote, read my lips, no new taxes. Excuse me. Read my lips, no new taxes. So you're not going to raise taxes? No. Read my lips, no new taxes. And when the economy started going down, he wanted to raise taxes to try to help the government. And he broke his promise. So people respect him for that. Even though he knew, oh my gosh, I promised and promised that I was not going to raise taxes, but I've got to. I might not get reelected, but I've got to. So in a way, you, I think he can be respected for going against his promise just to help the economy. To, but on the other hand, it probably cost him the election. Got it? Okay, let's see a little something about George Bush Sr. Remember, this is not George W. Bush. This is George H.W. Bush. George W. Bush's father. Here we go. George Herbert Walker Bush was a war hero, a business leader, vice president, perhaps the strongest resume of anyone in history to the presidency of the United States. George H.W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States, was born in Milton, Massachusetts on June 12, 1924. Bush's father was part of the A-list of that era, and in fact, he eventually was a senator. Bush went to boarding school at Phillips Academy in Massachusetts. He began dating 16-year-old Barbara Pierce after meeting her at a 1941 Christmas dance. The day he turned 18, he enlisted in the United States Navy, the youngest pilot in the United States Navy during World War II. He That's what's so terrible. People, th oh, he's a wimp, he's a wimp. In 1944, he, he was not a wimp. Shot down by enemy fire. He spent hours in the Pacific, was finally rescued by a U.S. Navy submarine. Bush was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, flying a total of 58 combat missions. In January 1945, George and Barbara Bush married. The couple had six children. After he got out of the Navy, he went to Yale University, and he was a member of the university baseball wow. team. He graduated with an economics degree in 1948. He went to Midland, Texas, and he formed a little oil company. The oil company was successful. In 1963, Bush became chairman of the Harris County, Texas Republican Party. He ran for the United States Senate uh, and lost. In 1966, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, serving two terms. Then he became the U.N. ambassador. And during the Watergate Richard scandal, Nixon, Watergate. Nixon picked him to head the Republican National Committee. And then President Ford asked him to become the U.S. envoy to China. Ford later appointed Bush to head the CIA. He was widely credited as restoring the agency's reputation and respect on Capitol Hill and uh, throughout government. Bush ran for president in 1980, losing the Republican nomination to Ronald Reagan. Reagan saw George Bush as somebody with a great resume. Reagan picked him as his running mate, and on November 4th, 1980, the Reagan-Bush ticket defeated incumbent President Jimmy Carter. Bush served as Reagan's vice president for two terms, and then, in 1988, ran for president. Read my lips. No. No. Taxes. That's his wife. Bush won in a decisive victory over Democratic nominee Michael Dukakis. He was the first sitting vice president to be elected president since 1837. Wow. During Bush's presidency, the Soviet Union crumbled. The U.S. military removed Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega from power. Then in August 1990, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein invaded oil-rich Kuwait. Without a doubt, the major success of Bush's presidency was the way he handled the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. Persian the Gulf War. Coalition. The 28 countries with forces in the Gulf area have exhausted all reasonable efforts to reach a peaceful resolution have no choice but to drive Saddam from Kuwait by force. We will not fail. They got Saddam out of Kuwait, and then they stopped. Domestically, the Bush administration was struggling. We were in a recession in 1990. He made a deal to agree to some new taxes. His campaign promise about read my lips, no new taxes, ended up costing him 
In November 1992, George Bush lost his bid for re-election to Democrat Bill Clinton. But Bush continued his public service even after leaving the White House. He was involved in a number of humanitarian operations, raising money for victims of the tsunami or victims of Hurricane Katrina. Okay, so that's Bush Sr. Remember, that's Sr., and that's the Persian Gulf War. His son, Bush George W. Bush, is the one that will be with the Iraq War, which we're just, I think we've got still 5,000 private contractors there. We're not officially there, I don't think, anymore, but we have private contractors still in Iraq. So that's a, a different one coming up. Okay, Bill Clinton, remember the economy's bad if you're a Republican president and the economy's bad, you, you, you might lose and you, uh, America's going to elect a Democrat. Just like if you're a Democrat president and the economy's bad, America will probably elect a Republican. That's usually the way it works. 1993 to 2001, that's two terms, so he's pretty popular. Squeeze that in there, two terms, popular. Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton, he signed NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement. It's very controversial, North American Free Trade Agreement. Basically, it made it where Canada, America, and Mexico have less barriers to trade with each other. It's easier for them to trade with each other. Uh... If you're a union worker in Detroit, you don't like it because this is what would happen. Hey, Bill, come here. What's up, boss? Gotta let you go. Why? I'm going to start paying you $42 an hour. How long you been here? 25 years. Look, now with NAFTA, we can go down to Mexico and pay $14 an hour. Why would I pay $42 to you when I could go down to Mexico and pay $14, maybe even less, to somebody else? Sorry. So... Unions really didn't like this too much. NAFTA. Um, you probably heard President Trump saying, we got to get rid of NAFTA, we're going to get rid of NAFTA. I think it already has been changed a little bit. So that's NAFTA. North American Free Trade Agreement. Write that down. You should know that for the test. Monica Lewinsky scandal, and he's impeached. President Clinton, unfortunately for him, is most known for the uh, affair he had with the 21-year-old intern called Monica Lewinsky. She was from California. She wasn't getting paid any money, but obviously if you can have an internship in the White House, that's going to help you get some jobs when you graduate from college. So they started flirting. Next thing you know, they're fooling around. And just like with uh, Nixon, it's the lie that gets you. I never touched that woman. I don't even know her that well. She works for me. I never touched that woman. He went right on TV. He looked right in the camera. And then uh, Monica, kind of like with Nixon with the tapes, Monica was calling a friend of her. She thought she was a friend called Linda Tripp and complaining about the affair. He doesn't want to be with me anymore. He wants to have me not work in the White House. Bill Clinton wants to end it. He wants to put me over here in some other job. And Linda Tripp, who was uh, kind of friends with some Republicans, remember Clinton's Democrat, started sharing these tapes, sharing the recorded conversations. And uh, then she was able to pr have proof with DNA evidence that Bill Clinton and her were fooling around. I'll let you figure out what that is. Bill Clinton left some DNA evidence uh, one time, and she had proof that he was... Okay, I think you could figure it out. So that's when he had to admit that he was having sex, but he didn't go all the way. I didn't go all the way. When I was growing up, that's not really... So that was kind of his excuse. And uh, he was impeached. President Trump's not the only president to be impeached. I think it's happened four or five times now. Clinton was impeached, and that doesn't mean kicked out, as we know with Trump. It means you go to the Senate, and by the time he got to the Senate, he had like a year or two left in his presidency, and the senators just said, oh, look, we're going to sanction you. We're going to make it where you can't be a lawyer in Arkansas anymore. 
we're not going to kick you out. But it was definitely a, uh, a stain on his, on his reputation and on how he looks, will be looked at as a president. He's called the Teflon president, though, because nothing seemed to stick with him. Approval ratings stayed high. And why do your approval ratings stay high as president, even though you get caught lying about fooling around with a 21-year-old intern from California? How do your, your ratings stay high? Because people have jobs. There you go. People have jobs. So for the Times 4, put down, even though he lied about fooling around, because the economy was good, nothing stuck to him. Teflon is like nonstick pans. We use Teflon pans for our eggs. It's easy to clean. Nothing sticks to Teflon. That's why he was called the Teflon president. So remember that for the test. True or false? Jimmy Carter is called the Teflon president. No, false. Bill Clinton, because nothing stuck to him. And why doesn't things, don't things stick? Because people are happy they have a job. And, you know, there was this new thing called the computer that started in the 90s, I think. Sometimes presidents get kind of lucky with the economy. When you have a brand new industry coming up, like automobile industry or computer industry in the 90s, that really helped Clinton. It's a whole people buying consumer goods, consumer goods. So that definitely helped him. And he was the last president to balance the budget. Put that. He was able to have it where we were not in debt. He was spending as much as he was making. And obviously, when you have a good economy, that helps. All right. I see a little quickie. Quick video. Oh, good. We have time. I think we got about four minutes before we run out here. We have to go to the next one. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is the American dream. He had no elite resources or privilege or status. He became the youngest governor in the United States. He became the third youngest president in the United States. Alcoholic stepfather used to beat him. Bill Clinton was born William Jefferson Blythe III on August 19th, He took his stepfather's name, I think. Three months after his birth, his father died in a traffic accident. Mm. At age four, his mother married Roger Clinton, whose last name Bill would adopt in high school. Billy. When Bill Clinton was 17, he had the chance to travel to... Look at this. The famous picture. Here's JFK. Look at this guy. He's not afraid. He's looking at him right in the eyes. These are two alpha dogs right here. Hey, look at that alpha eye look there. He's like, hey, I'm not intimidated by you. That's the Bill Clinton looking at the JFK, the most powerful person in the world. Maybe not after, if it was after Bay of Pigs invasion. <laughs> Washington, D.C. and meet JFK in the Rose Garden. It served to be a tremendous inspiration for Bill Clinton to enter into politics and public service. Clinton attended Georgetown University and graduated in 1968. So you're getting that? He's a poor guy from Arkansas. I didn't mention it, but his dad used to beat him and call him a lot of names. He turned it around. You're nothing. You're not going to not see anything, you piece of blankety blank. I'll show you. I'll show you. So he turned it around. He then won a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford University. Yeah, you got to be pretty smart to go to Oxford. Yale University Law School, where he met Hillary Rodham. The two married in 1975 and welcomed their only daughter, Chelsea, five years later. One way or another, Bill Clinton is going to be in politics. He was just great with people. I don't care who you were. If you said three words to him and he responded, you would walk away thinking, this guy was really interested in me. It's no wonder Bill Clinton was known as the comeback kid. He ran for Congress the in 1974 kid. as a young law professor in Arkansas. He lost. Two years later, ran for attorney general. Then he ran for governor. Juan Persistent. Clinton, he was thrown out, but then he was back again in the government. It's called grit. When Bill Clinton entered the presidential race in 1992, he was running against the very popular wartime incumbent, President George H.W. Bush, and few thought Clinton could win. There was a kind of animation and new politics about Bill Clinton that made him appealing, particularly to younger voters. Clinton won the 1992 presidential election in an upset victory and was sworn in as the 42nd president of the, of the economy, United remember. States on January 20th, 1993, at the age of 46. When he gave his first acceptance speech, Americans 
realize, my gosh, this is not the presidency we're used to. This guy's really young. Plus, his messages were very simple. It's like, hey, it's the economy, stupid. And people could understand all of those kitchen table issues. Bill Clinton, in his first term, NAFTA. NAFTA, a free trade agreement which really helped the economies of North America grow. And he also committed himself to reducing budget deficits. And by the end of his term as president, he had balanced the budget. That was historic. In November 1996, Bill Clinton became the first Democrat since FDR to win a second term at... It was obviously an incredibly low moment, but he did survive. He was a survivor. Despite the Lewinsky scandal, Clinton remained in effect. Got a picture of Monica here. There she is. Bill amazes Americans. He was impeached, but he wasn't convicted. It was obviously... There's Monica hugging moment, him. But he did survive. He was a survivor. Despite the Lewinsky scandal... Okay. I guess to go a little further, Bill we got a little Clinton more time. remained an effective president. The economy soared, and in foreign policy, Clinton pursued peace in Northern Ireland, a resolution to the Bosnian-Serbian conflict, and tried to secure peace between Israel and the Palestinians. When Clinton left office, his approval ratings were some of the highest on record. Teflon Bill president. Clinton in his ex-presidency has taken a model from Jimmy Carter and really using the prestige of that office to do enormous good in the world. The Hillary, Bill, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation does extraordinary work around the world. History will remember Bill Clinton as one of the great politicians ever. He could appeal to particularly ordinary people and downtrodden people, people who felt left behind, and make them feel that he cared for them. Bill Clinton is someone who has a tremendous taste for public life. If I have to describe Bill Clinton, I would describe someone who is not done yet. Okay, see you next part, guys.